Okay, welcome back. Week five. Um, so they this week for reading pop culture. It was a little longer. It was chapter five, and there was four different readings. Um, the first one is called Television Addiction. There's no mere metaphor by Robert Kubley, and I'm gonna murder this Mahalia. I'm not even gonna try the last name. It's like thirteen letters long, but it basically. <laughs> It basically puts how much a typical person watches television into perspective. Um, and it says that we typically spend three hours a day watching TV. So if someone were to live to 75, that would be nine years of somebody's lifespan spent watching television. Um, it then goes into discussing feeling, the feeling that one has when they are watching or not watching television. So, for example, it states, and I quote, Heavy viewers report feeling significantly, significantly more anxious and less happy than light viewers do in uninstructed situations such as doing nothing, daydreaming, or waiting in line, end quote. It clearly affects those who tend to watch TV more um, than those don't, and... It's just basically saying to be cautious of how much you watch TV, even though you may not realize it. Um, that includes Netflix, um, movies, literally anything. Um, so that was the first reading. The second reading is by Roxanne Gay, and it is called Girls, Girls, Girls. Um, it is a TV show on HBO. The TV show is called Girls, but the... It's a TV show on HBO that follows the life of four teenage girls that don't live the normal, like, normal teenage life. Go to school, come home, do homework, play sports. They don't. They, um, they all work together and one, there's only one that has a stable, decent place to live, even though she's the one that ran away from her family. And then the other three, um, have trouble taking care of themselves and, having a decent spot to live in um but they all are friends and um it is giving off the impression that not everyone grows up in the same environment and it is speaking to today's society and it is showing the girls that everyone is different and not everybody's gonna have that pretty view not everybody wears a size zero in pants like it's just reality basically um so that's the second reading the third reading is called The Apocalyptic Strain in Pop Culture, The American Nightmare Becomes the American Dream. And it is written by Paul A. Cantor. So the title basically explains it, really. Um, he is explaining that, in depth, like, in depth, he is explaining that how the old is now becoming the new. So, like, you see everybody, if you think about it, like, really, like, the whole, like, Things that go out of fashion are now coming back into fashion. The whole 2000s trend is coming back into fashion. And it is 2020. So 20 years later. Um, and everybody basically, he writes that, like, everybody basically wants a typical white picket fence house with a nice family in the suburbs. Um, but they have to work for that. They have to spend hours at the office, away from their children, wake up early, get home late. Um, to be able to provide that and it eventually leads to losing family morals um, and it's just a burden it like you can dream it all you want but it's not always gonna be a burden you can dream it all you want but that is the reality of most um, most lifestyles that the typical nine-to-five job lives um, so that's the third reading the fourth and last reading is called Netflix and the Future Television, written by Ken Auletta, I think. Um, that's his name. Um, it goes into how Blockbuster went out of business um, almost because of Netflix. Um, they tried not to, but then Netflix just ended up giving them a really good deal, basically, and Netflix ended up buying them out in two, 2007. Um, so after that, Netflix became like the new blockbuster, but just an easier way. Um, and it is one of the, it became one of the biggest streaming apps. Um, and the only thing that there was 
was that was like the issues there was two major issues with the improvising so one the advertisement was no longer being seen like it was due to things such as like ad free like Netflix has no ads I know like other other programs do but at that time it was like it w it went down like ads went it went down because of Netflix um and two everything is existential so there is no longer demand for DVD players, VCR players, you don't have to hook your TV up to an Xbox, PlayStation, none of that because it is a simple app you can get on your phone, connect it to your TV, you can plug in a little thing into your TV, but um, so that's the second problem and it's just kind of like time is changing quickly, rapidly um, and as citizens of society we must be able to adapt and adjust to it. So. That is Free Pop Culture Chapter 5. And then cha the Rhetorical Act, Chapter 4. Um, it is called The Resources of Evidence. So it starts off by discussing how every piece of evidence must be judged by two criteria. So the first is what are what are its logical or empirical strengths and limitations? And the second is why are its psychological power why bleh, what are its psychological powers? So ideally, a good supporting like good supporting material should show the truth of the claim. It should be clear, vivid, and concrete, and it and it should present rhetoric that is competent and trustworthy. Um, so rhetors should have five categories of evidence as resources and those five should include stories statistics experts analogies and visuals so those are the main five um the analogies there are with analogies there are two types there's literal and figurative um for stories they provide an example of mckibben speaking to pollution and then for stats, they use also the McKibben, McKibben example and how he adds statistics about pollution to support his evidence. Um, for visuals, for the section visuals, the reading provides an example of how Ronald Reagan would provide charts and graphs to illustrate his State of the Union address when he was becoming president and was president. Um, and for the experts, or in, um, they describe how authority and expertise expertise strengthens one's claim and forms a strong piece of evidence especially if you get somebody with credentials so that was the rhetorical act and that was week five be back for next week